Hey guys, well, uh, making progress on the second wing. So uh, I had some people ask me if working on the second wing is going any faster, that would be the right wing, is going any faster uh, now that I'm I coming at it after having done one. Uh, and the answer is uh, yes, much, much faster. Uh, in fact, I think it took me, it took me almost two weeks, I think, really to get the the left wing to a point where I had all the ribs assembled and riveted and cleaned and put into place with the with the the rear spar installed and everything. That took like two weeks on the first wing, I I think I vaguely recall, and I I think I did it in a day and a half on the on the left wing. Now part of that is because I I spent basically eight hours out here working on it, uh, but. Yes, so much faster. Uh, in fact, I've repositioned the shop so that I have the wings sort of sort of in a V shape so I can stand between them and, and mirror them so I can just kind of look back and forth and kind of go, oh yeah, I remember what I was doing. And that was really helpful too, is having just having that visual cue of what it should look like, well, the opposite of what it should look like, uh, really helped a lot. So uh, I'm finally to a point though, where I can start working on that service bulletin that had come out back in May. Uh, so for, I think, almost the entire van's line, they came out with a service bulletin because the, um, uh, the hinge bracket for the inboard aileron uh, was showing some cracking. And so they go, uh, issued a service bulletin for people to go ahead and fix this. So I thought I'd go ahead and show you what that is now. All right, so this is the service bulletin that was issued uh, to replace the cracking, or, or to address rather, the cracking that can form in both the aft wing rear spar and the inboard aileron hinge bracket, which is this guy. Um, now this is the one that I had built for the right wing, when I built the one for the left wing, I went ahead and built both of these at the same time. And so this one's just been sitting on the shelf waiting. Uh, well, we're replacing this guy with uh, two piece, instead of a three piece assembly, which has the, the, this, um, has this bend here in this flange. There's like a flange bend that's all, all part of the single. That's where the cracking is showing up in this flange. Instead of that, they've issued a two piece, which is the same thickness. And then you create, you create the flange out of a much thicker piece of aluminum uh, and then go from there. The thing that it does not come with. So this, I thought this, this service bulletin kit was pretty cheap. I think it was like 50 bucks. I mean, it really wasn't all that much. Uh, but to keep that cost down, this bearing that's in here didn't come in the kit. So you have to harvest the bearings from these pieces. Um, now it specifically says in the service bulletin that if you don't see any cracking, that it's not recommended to do the bulletin. Um, but since my plane isn't even flying yet, it's still a pile of parts, I figured I'd go ahead and do this. I mean, that way I don't have to do the inspection every year to look specifically for this. Uh, hopefully this would address it, you know, and it would never be a problem. So I'm um, going to read through this multiple more times. It's a little confusing how they did this because this is this particular service bulletin addre is addressed across all the planes, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 14. Um, each step kind of says which planes you're supposed to do it for. And it also takes into the assumption that your plane is already assembled. So, um, and you skip steps and I, I don't know, it's a, it's a little confusing to read, uh, but I'm going to read it and go over it and try to implement it. It shouldn't be too hard. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, the big thing is I have to undo a lot of work in order to, uh, harvest these these uh, hinge brackets, or, or these uh, bearings rather. The bearings cost $15 each from Vans. I could easily just order two of them. Um, I mean, it would be cheap, but you know, this, there's nothing wrong with this bearing. I might as well just harvest it out of here if I can. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So here it is assembled on the left wing, and you can see this is the piece that causes issues. Apparently cracking shows up by these two rivets right here, and along this bend, cracking will appear. So that's the idea. So I've gotta, I gotta drill this whole guy out. 
So I'm going to continue working on this in the background. And uh, I just want to say these instructions are actually well written. I, did, I didn't mean to bash them. Uh, these instructions that they send you for this particular bulletin assume that you're working on an airplane that's already flying and that you have discovered a crack. And that's why you're implementing these. They say very specifically that uh, if you have a flying aircraft and you don't see a crack, don't implement this fix. Just, uh, just put a note in the log and check it every annual makes sense. Um, I decided to go ahead and implement this fix so that I wouldn't have to check it every annual. I mean, I mean I got, I've got opening, my wings are wide open, right? Why wouldn't I implement this? So the thing on the instructions that confused me is when I got to the point where it's talking about the whole stop drill, uh, stop drill center points and the cracks, and I, I, again, I didn't really put together what it was trying to say or why I would do this. Um, and of course, I wouldn't do this. This is only if you if you have a flying airplane, uh, airplane and you have a crack, then you want to drill slightly beyond the crack, put a hole there, and it's a way to stop the crack from, from pop propagating. Makes perfect sense. So now I understand. Now I am no longer confused. Uh, I've already harvested one of these little bearings, these little $15 bearings off of one of them, and now I'm going to harvest it off the other one and then continue putting together the rest of this particular fix. Um, the only other thing that I, I'm curious about is there's kind of a, a, a small doubler that goes on the back side of the aileron um, rear spar that, I mean, it's a doubler. It's not just a thicker plate, but it's actually made of this thick angle stuff that I don't really know what the point of it is. It's kind of a weird thing. I'm sure it serves a purpose. It just kind of seems odd, but eh. you know, I'm going to implement it as it says, and then get back on track on the wings. I'm glad I had to do this now, as opposed to later on down the road when I had a fully flying air, airplane, because I got to, I got to think getting up underneath your aircraft to make this fix probably sucks. Uh, so doing this with the wings off is definitely the way to go. So anyway, here we go. Well, there you go. In the background, I'm working on uh, continuing on the right wing. And after having finished working on this, uh, this doubler replacement, um, turned out to be really easy, actually. The, so the, I think, like I said, my initial confusion was around the whole stop drills and what that was for. That was entirely if you had a working plane, which I don't. Um, so this really was about just uh, replacing the flanges, I think, on this particular piece. And I've got it. I've got it on the doubler plate here. I got. I got to take this home and drill this hole out. Uh, so I just thought I'd show you. This is what it'll look like on the plane. And it, it, this is the piece that I thought was interesting. On the bottom, there's <clears throat> excuse me. There's these uh, a, a thicker doubler, and they've got these two flanges that I have to think that these are here just to add an incredible amount of stiffness to this part, uh, which makes sense. I mean, this is aileron, right? You, you want this to not fail. So uh, I thought that was interesting. Uh, and if that's not what these, what the point of these are, please comment, because I have no idea what else uh, these would be about. But so this turned out to be really simple, harvesting, Harvesting these little bearings was trivial. Uh, again, you can buy them for $15 from Vans if you want to. They'll be more than happy to sell them to you, but uh, you don't need to. And uh, I did uh, call Vans and ask them if this was something I should go ahead and do on a new plane that I'm busy working on, uh, or if I've already got the old way done, just leave it. And uh, the tech that I talked to said, yeah, go ahead and do it. They recommend you do it because it's, it's one of those things, exactly as I said, uh, that you'll just now, now never have to check. So I got Van's approval there. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't hard at all, honestly. And also they said that all the new kits implement this and it's, uh, it's really easy. Um, and yeah, you could tell it's a lot stronger too. So that's pretty impressive. So that's that. I'm gonna keep working on all the things. And uh, I had a few people ask me, by the way, uh, they've noticed the green screen in the background, and they asked me if that's for filming uh, this overlay. And in fact, it is. And how I do that is I have a camera off screen to show that I have a camera here, I have the green screen here, and I'm mic'd up so you can hear me. So that's how that works. And um, 
it's just one of those silly things that I do. I think it makes the, the videos a little more watchable and uh, I kind of have fun with it. Plus it's kind of one of those end of the day wrap it up things that I do. So speaking of wrapping it up, thanks everybody. I uh, really appreciate you guys watching it for all my Patreon supporters. Thank you. If you guys want to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link over there you can click. I really appreciate it. And if you would be so kind as to give me a thumbs up or like this video, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, that actually helps my rankings. And ultimately, if you don't want to do any of those things, that's okay too. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.